my name is Mo Amir and this is Van Color, British Columbia's bona fide culture and politics TV talk show right here on Check and Check Plus. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Tonight, why is there so much toxicity and vitriol directed at the media, including right here in BC? With increasing harassment of journalists, both online and offline, there seems to be a lot of dangerous anger towards people just doing their jobs and trying to deliver us information. Legendary broadcaster and news director, Jill Kropp, joins us to discuss our country's changing media landscape. But first, you're probably wondering why I'm in a bubble bath right now. Well, actually, our first guest tonight has been talking to men about masculine identities and gender equality in a rapidly changing culture while the men take a bubble bath. And I figured I should try it out for myself. She is a journalist formerly of CTV Vancouver, the author of the book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, Oh, Oh, and a renowned public speaker and the voice of Sexual Health Week at universities and colleges across Across Canada, the founder and host of Men Who Take Baths. She is Nicole Hodges. Nicole, thanks for being part of the weirdest interview that I've ever conducted. <laughs> it is my absolute pleasure to be here and witness this. <laughs> so your project, Men Who Take Baths, is a series of conversations with interesting men across the globe as they sit in a bubble bath. You're exploring masculine psychology and male identity, along with gender equity issues in all of these conversations. But I have to ask you, why do the men need to be bathing to have this conversation? Why am I sitting in a bath right now, Nicole? Well, I guess, how do you feel? Maybe a bit vulnerable, a bit open. Oh, definitely vulnerable, <laughs> definitely vulnerable. <laughs> well, the bath nakedness, first of all, allows one to strip away persona. Second of all, there is this immersion in the bath, which is almost a return to a, like a womb, you know, and I, and I, and I don't right. want to make it too symbolic. But there is something about the bath. And a lot of these men haven't had a bath since they were a kid. Um, they get to return to that state of mind that's playful before the world told them that they had to put that away in order to be a man. Right. And I'm definitely one of those men who has not had a bath since I was a kid. I've definitely showered and showered multiple times a day, but certainly not a bath. So I want to talk about what's happening today. What are the dynamics or changes in the culture that you've identified, which make these conversations that you're having uh, worth having? Well, Men Who Take Baths was conceptualized in 2018, and it was funny because a couple of days before we were supposed to shoot, the revelations of Me Too happened, and the story around Harvey Weinstein was published, and I realized, wow, I'm about to capture masculinity at both the beginning and the end of something really transformative. And I recognized the importance of the project then and that I would need to carry it forward because so much of masculinity or, or being a man is predicated on simply not being a woman, right? Mm. And so when, I mean, Simone de Beauvoir, who's a French uh, philosopher who I really like, she, she said it perfectly, like one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. So mm. what is a woman if simply not a man? And the same can be applied to the male lens. Like, what is a man if simply not a woman? But after Me Too, men had to look at their behavior and women really started to push against this idea of being lesser than or weaker than or silenced. And men had to start looking at who they were, not in relation to women being subjugated, but who are men in relation to women as their equal? And so I guess if, if we're just trying to understand what masculinity is, you know, how, how do we even define it? Because we know that across cultures, masculinity is expressed in different ways, but then also individually being a man or being masculine means different things to different people. I think ma masculinity historically has been purpose-driven, right? When something needs mm. to get done, men are the tools get that done. So what is the purpose of masculinity today, uh, especially when women are breaking free from traditional ontology and gender roles? So I think a masculine movement is 
important. And we, we've seen feminist movements, but where's the masculine movement, right? Where's the, where's the movement towards starting to question whether there needs to be a reinvented masculine archetype? So there's a reconciliation that almost needs to happen with men where they reconnect with feminine aspects of themselves that doesn't have to do with perceiving showing emotion as as weakness so and is that what, yeah, is what, that what like, people mean when they talk about toxic masculinity like you're talking about this idea of purpose and then you're talking about shying away from showing emotion so like what is toxic masculinity in all of this toxic masculinity i would say to, to attempt to put it succinctly is the subjugation of the other in order to maintain a sense of superiority or a misguided use of power. So it almost sounds like toxic masculinity is this space that's devoid of something like empathy. You're, you're so strong, quote unquote, strong and stoic that you're lacking empathy. You know, it's interesting because in feminist movements, we looked a lot to the masculine to help guide what it could be, right? A, a feminist movement at some points in history have looked has looked more like a masculine movement in that women were were recognized their value in uh, political spectrum or economic and tried to rise to the same level as man rather than doing an exceptional job of being women. So a masculine movement isn't to be a feminist movement in the sense where men lose their sense of identity trying to be more feminine. It kind of comes back to that question that I asked, how how can the healthy masculine express itself to the highest ideal by integrating the emotions that allow men to feel whole and complete? And I think that's going to come about through a collaboration between other men and deciding, OK, well, what makes us feel best as men? Well, hey, Nicole, I love your work. I love this project. I really do appreciate your time. Frankly, I wish I could conduct all my interviews in the bath, but somehow I don't know if most of my guests would be completely comfortable with that. But thank you so much for sharing this experience with me. Thank you so much. Folks, that was Nicole Hodges, the founder and the host of Men Who Take Baths. Check them out online for more. Now, after some business, I'm going to head back to the studio and hopefully not run into one of these anti-media protests on the way there. Have you noticed lately that there just seems to be a lot of anger spilling over into harassment and even violence sometimes against news reporters and journalists? Well, once I get some clothes on, we're going to talk about it. Legendary BC media icon Jill Crop is up next. I'm Mo Amir. This is Van Color. <laughs>